So how did that game end? Well, this is the state of play at uh, game end. Um, you can see that essentially there was a there would have been another board here. There was one uh, American unit was left about there. This um had been broken for a long time, and that managed to zip in right on the last um but one turn and uh, take a a hex there. But essentially, the Americans managed to take all nineteen hexes here, except for that one. Seven hexes here. Well, that one was retaken. And uh, then they slipped into, they got um, four hexes here, which brought them to 26 hexes. So they just pipped a win, needing 25. And it was a very near run thing because you can see, I've, I've actually I've taken some counters off the board because I, I started some other games. I just wanted to hold this one just to show you the end. So you can't actually see the full force of the um, German forces. They had some more... These are all their positions, but like there was a, a machine gun here, I think, and a machine gun there. Um, so the Americans had to quickly bring units over here to hold off this counter-attack. And uh, their flamethrower was here, was like holding the Germans from counter-attacking this way. And these are all, all broken German units, those ones just recently. So they just, the Germans just didn't manage to take back a couple more hexes here. The Americans had time after completely eliminating the units here just to zip over and take these. And that won them the game. So that was um, scenario three, a simple equation, simple equation. Um, and I had, I played scenario one years ago, played scenario two uh, here at home just before and that was called the War of the Rats. Uh, then since that, I played Scenario 4. Um, welcome back. Uh, I can't remember much about that off the top of my head. Um, and then I've just been playing... Hang on, there's one in Hosingen. Yes, Welcome Back was in Hosingen. Oh yes, that was an interesting one. Um, a, essentially, the, um, the victory conditions, the Germans were immediately upon exiting 10 VPs off the west edge. That was basically five squads and or um, leaders, uh, leader one and so forth. And that, interestingly, used the same map as the next scenario, but in a different way. So... Um, Scenario five, Welcome Back, was set in Hosingen, and um, you had very few German squads. So this isn't the, the, from that scenario. So you had like two flamethrowers, a heavy machine gun, and a medium machine gun, I think, and that was it, and some leaders and, you know, the squads taking them. Uh, and they had to set up within sort of this hex row. The Germans came on... Yes, and then the Germans came on this side and they had to exit between this road here and this road. So essentially, they, they uh, seeing as the Americans in the middle, the Germans were going to come off this road or this road. And it was, it was something which illustrates something that's beautiful about ASL. Um, ASL is essentially um, what's termed a sandbox game in that you are given a system and um, that system can take you into many different scenarios. Now, many games are built um, for a particular battle, and so the, the system is tailored for what went on in that battle and to reproduce that and create a possible storyline avenues from that. But the ASL system um, can go, it can kind of go three ways. Um, but it's such a detailed and such tried and tested system that essentially it, it the first thing it can do, which is something that it really sort of borrows over from miniature play, is it has a point system. So you can just take a map, you can take sides and you spend points and you get on your different units for each side. And then, you know, you say have one perhaps as a defender and he might have 20, 30 percent less points or whatever. The other is the attacker and you go at it or however you choose to do it with some modifications like that. Now that 
is um, a great fun way of doing it because you know you make make up your scenarios and your stories and so forth as you go on. However, I think it has a drawback in that in miniatures games, generally terrain and so forth is, is a lot more abstracted. And um, the, the whole granularity of everything, even like, you know, tanks and so forth, with specific types of different tanks, etc., are so abstracted that on a point system set in a certain amount of terrain, it's quite easy to factor in the effect of, you know, one or two hills and a bit of woods and not create an imbalance. But ASL has such granularity that every different point of terrain has an effect which is important in the effect that, that it brings. And every unit has subtleties of effect, different abilities that they're all very important within the system that to set up a game like that straight out of the sandbox is a very risky proposition in terms of imbalance. For example, for instance, um, you might find that, um, say on this map, if you're the defender or you're both sort of coming at each other, say meeting engagement, that um, whoever gets a certain set of buildings first destined to be the winner and uh, it could happen in a miniatures game as well but I think it's it's less likely to create imbalance because you can see ahead because the, the abstraction's greater the detail's not so um, intense that that problem's not going to come up so much uh, can be foreseen more so, so that's one thing you can do though with the ASL sandbox the second thing is what most scenarios are like such as this one it's based on an actual event this occurred in Hosingen, Luxembourg, 16th of December, 1944. So there's the story. You have the basic situation, but then everything is finely, finely tuned. So first of all, uh, a representative set of terrain is chosen. So, you know, what do we need? We need something with some, say, woods and fields, and it's got buildings. Maybe we need more buildings, so we'll use this half of the map. We're not going to use that half where there's not much buildings because it's this situation was more about um, ha urban fighting, etc. Um, so you, you you can match the situation to a, a, a general purpose board, you know, especially when you have a series of boards, you can put boards together, you can take off parts of boards and so forth. You can even get e -lays, overlays in ASL so you can add little patches to adjust fine tune the terrain that's representative and then um the forces are really finely tuned um to match each other the turn the number of turns are really finely matched so often you find uh, finely tuned often you find this which means that the first player gets the last turn but the second player they don't get a go on the last turn so that's often going to be a crucial difference for example if you are um in this game in this scenario, the Germans start first. Um, they, the Americans, their last turn will be on turn five. Then the Germans will get one more go for that final push, and that might be absolutely necessary. In you know, if if you just did a do your own, you wouldn't have a turn end limit, so you could keep on going um, until one person's got no chance. Uh, um, here you want to give each each side an equal chance, so the forces, the terrain, uh, the timing is all finely tuned, and then also the victory conditions. So, for example, um, in the scenario, um, the uh, situation is that um, yes, so so the Germans wanted to. Um, move through the Germans wanted to move through and that's represented as them needing to exit so many squads off these roads so you're not you don't you're not tasked with moving all of your force you're not moving the whole German force it's just a representative of the effort so the victory conditions are tied to the um, situation but they are tuned again so as to tie in with all the rest of it to create a balance so you know the number of victory points you need to exit could be tuned off. It might not have any real bearing 
apart from the fact of the situation in relation to the real situation. So the Germans wanted to get control of these roads, but within the terms of this scenario, the actual amount of your force that you have to get off is tuned towards the victory and the balance. And then finally, they, they also have um, this balance point. So the American and the German side can each um, have an adjustment to balance whichever is felt to be the favoured side or the more experienced player and so forth. So that's the second thing you can do. And then the third thing is what's the hassle, historical ASL. So the maps are based historical. So it's is more like where you have a, and there's lots of special rules added, seen, um, situation specific rules. I mean, you do get special rules on the situations that adjust the basic rules. Um, in the scenarios but again the historical ones will take it that step further and tune that sandbox a bit more to a specific battle so it's not just sort of world war ii generic or a certain theater generic but um fine tune for that battle so as which is all to say that asl is a really finely tuned system and um there are sometimes it felt to be imbalances and and uh um records bear out that some scenarios are imbalanced to one side or the other and the fact that the amount of people that have played it you know there's sort of 30 70 60 40 wins losses etc but on the whole they're really well tuned and what that means and especially with this stripped down starter kit you get um another thing which is a beaut about asl um and also something that's wonderful about many war games more so sort of sandbox ones than the ones that provide you with a, a set piece battle where you have to set up the units according to historical positions. In in this, you set up your units yourself. So you have certain parameters, but within that, half the game of ASL is the setup. So for example, that game I was talking about set in Hosingen, welcome back. Essentially, the Amer the Americans had taken Hosingen, Hosingen some time ago, and uh, the Germans are now trying to. I guess it's during um the Battle of the Bulge that they want the uh, the road network, so they start moving around in the f at, um in the early hours of the morning. Once they've got their main sort of thrust passed, they send him some rear echelon troops to take um the, the the road network so for their supply and so forth so that's the setup but the point is is that the americans have so few units it's a finely balanced game that you have to place them really carefully to make sure you can cover that point that point and all hexes in between on that row and so it's a puzzle and half of the puzzle, and it's it's not just a normal puzzle like sort of a Euro game where you have the mechanics, you know, every, you know everything that's going on under the hood, and you've just got to sort of puzzle that out. It's another puzzle in that light war, and that you don't you have to organize your plan, and then the enemy enters, and your plan goes to part, is torn to shreds, and you have to re puzzle it. So again, part of that puzzle is setting things up so that you can re plan and, and reorganize and so ASL in that respect is a game of two halves there's the setup also for for example the attacker where do you attack you could have attacked here 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 as it was I sent in some uh, to, to threaten here because the Americans left it unguarded thinking well it would take a long time to get around there plus the American plan was essentially they set up forward because these this being winter there's no cover from these fields they're just um snowy snowy fields not like high um stands of wheat and so forth so the Americans set up their machine guns to sort of cover this area and their flamethrowers to cover here because the flamethrowers have shorter range so it's but it, there's they could there's cover here, and there's short open ground here, so the flamethrowers could kind of cover that. Machine guns could cover here, and they also had to be able to cover this area. The Germans, I think, set up sort of between here and here. I can't remember. Maybe they could set up here, but anyway, they it was known that they could try and sort of come around. And um, that's essentially what happened. So these ones were kind of more of a diversionary force. And the um, Germans did basically, they managed to come round here through this area, through this screen, and they 
edged units off here and won the scenario. But the point was, was that half of the action, the whole of the game play in that second half, which is once um, the first turn begins, um, was dictated by the setup, A, the American setup, and B, the German plan of attack and their setup. And so it's wonderful. ASL really exemplifies that because of its fine tuning and its free form setups, because it's not stuck to um, a. It, I, I don't think I've ever seen an ASL scenario that where they say this unit has to be in that hex, this unit has to be in that hex, because they're all kind of like um, representational battles. So they take the situation and they give you a representation of it. So the historical it would be it'd be interesting to design an ASL scenario and then design the same scenario as a a single standalone war game in itself where with the standalone war game you, you people would want you to look at the records for where every unit was maybe not so much tactical because we don't have that record but more or less you know which, where the units were um at the beginning and then go from there whereas with ASL the beginning is half of the game, setting up the beginning. So, um, I'm not quite sure where I was going with this, except really, I suppose, just to say, so that was scenario four. Then I just played scenario five, call, called Clearing Carleville, which um, I say played and playing, which uses the same board, but now it's switched, so the Germans have um the town so this that same board but it's representing Colleyville not Hosingen and the Americans have um forces trying to come in um and again it's interesting and finely tuned it's um so it's not quite certain when all of the American units come on how many they well it is but you're not quite sure how many they will be and it is great. It, I think what it is, I'm finding my experience of this ASL starter kit number one is having some background in ASL, I can get into the game very easily. It's a breeze to play. Like I said before, it takes half an hour for a turn that playing both sides. That's 50 minutes for each side. Sometimes it's even less because it's being starter kit um, and being starter kit one, it's infantry only. You don't have so much to think about, you know, like guns and tanks and not so many units anyway because it's not huge maps. So some turns are taking five minutes. And so I'm breezing through these um, scenarios and very soon I will be on scenario number six, the last one in the box, released from the east, which I'm looking forward to. I'm not, I, 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 I'm a terrible, like, I get into stuff and then I, you know, I reach that hump it's the it's the solo solo player's nemesis I find is that because I don't have an opponent to keep me going, um you know I can sit down and play with uh, my f um war gaming buddies for eight hours at a stretch um barely moving from the table and it's not a problem but and and well I can do that as a solo player but then then. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is there's no one to keep me to the scenario. If I get a bit fidgety, it's easy to scrap it. Whereas posed, you know, you keep each other going. So I'm finding, because I, I kind of know how this scenario is going to turn out, there could be a surprise, you know, depending on um, what the vagaries of warfare bring out, i.e. dice rolls. But um, I, I sort of know how this one's going to play out and I'm itching to get on. So the last one, which is Stalingrad Germans versus Russians, a little bit more interesting situation to me. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know what else to say, except that I've really enjoyed the starter kit, starter kit um, thing. I've got the starter kit three, but I sort of bulk at going into that because of... Uh, um, I know that it will slow down because I will be needing to look up lots of rules for the tanks. So that is the thing about ASL. I, I'm comfortable enough with infantry that this is a breeze for me. And it, there must be a point where you're comfortable enough with tanks that that is a breeze for you. And you're comfortable enough with guns that they are a breeze for you. And so at each of those um, plateaus, uh, ASL is just a joy. You know, it's not 
a slug um that that uh it can be be bemoaned to be it just depends you just need to reach the plateau and with the starter kits you can reach the infantry plateau a lot quicker than say if you have the yeah, then full ASL because again there's a lot more in full ASL um, and this is a very nice way to do it coming from ASL to, to start a kit and it's, obviously it's tailored for the other way so um, I'm waffling a lot and uh, I just want to say one last thing is I've just been watching a video on Holland 44 which is an operational game and it's a video by a YouTuber Jeff Capuano I think I think that's how you pronounce his name, and I think it's so it's Jeff J E W -F, F C A P, and I'm not sure about the rest. I don't want to spell it because I get it wrong. Capuano, but you know you you put in Jeff Cap, I, I guess it might find it or Holland forty four, um, Mark Simonich, and you'll find his latest video, and I really recommend going to his channel because uh, he, he he does, I I really like the way he covers the games. He's he's quite. He has quite a considered approach, and he, he he comes he presents himself, he presents what he's trying to present very well. So I'll just um, give you that recommendation before I go now, and uh, um, ta-ta for now. Okay, so here is the situation. From, hang on, actually I I got to do this on a separate video I think because this might make this one too long. Sorry about this.